What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna tackle one of the most asked questions when you're about to get the G8X platform. And that's if you should get the carbon bucket seats. And in this video, we're gonna tackle that question today, so stay tuned. All right, so let's deep dive into it. We're gonna talk about the carbon bucket seats. We're gonna see the pros and cons and what I thought about them. And end of the day, you have to make your decision if these carbon bucket seats are for you. Um, obviously, these are the, one of the best looking seats out there in the OEM market. You know, you look at any other brands, Audi, Mercedes, um, nothing really compares to these carbon bucket seats. Obviously, you could look into Porsche. Porsche, I think, is on a different level. But when you look at these carbon bucket seats, they look absolutely amazing. Anywhere from the front side view, um, especially with your passengers in the back, they have a gorgeous view of the carbon buckets and also the really unique features. Um, because when you look at these seats, they're very functional, right? They're very functional. And also they have heated seats, which is something pretty amazing. Um, that's one of the things that you can look at the pros on. When you go to car shows or when you go to events, people that haven't seen or doesn't know really much about the G8X platform, when they see these seats, they're blown away. And I've been to a couple events and also showed this car off to a couple family members. And when they looked at these seats, this is one of the highlights of this car. Some of you guys are tuning into this video, you guys are probably thinking, or you're in the process of getting a G8X M3, um, G8X M4, and you're in the process of thinking, is this, for me at the time, $3,800 option, is it worth it for me? I think 2023 coming up, I think it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, so I'll list it right over here, whatever it's costing right now. At the end of the day, take these, uh, opinions of mine and make your own opinion and judgment and make the best decision that you can do on selecting the right option. And if these seats are not for you, you also have a really good looking uh, comfort seat. And those comfort seats look pretty good. So looks can't be everything, right? Looks can't be everything. Um, I also go into the feel, right? When you sit in these seats, in this car, this power plant, uh, the way this car sounds, especially after you modify it with an exhaust, it just amplifies the driving experience. It makes you feel like you're in a sports car. Granted that obviously a lot of these bells and whistles and these accommodations does make you feel like you're in a sports car, but having these carbon bucket seats just amplifies that step a little bit more. So going back into the feel of it, especially if you own a manual car, this seating position in the carbon buckets, it allows you to get into a low position where when you look in the head on the road, you're kind of feeling like you're in a low position, more of like a sporty feel, especially when you're driving a manual car. The way your arm is rested onto the armrest, it allows you to have a little bit more smoother uh, throws into the second gear, third gear, as, as so on and so forth. And what I noticed, that was the first time I noticed driving the car off the lot. The seating position itself, as I get adjusted to it, I was enjoying um, how it made me feel in the car. It made me feel a little bit more confident in the car. And I've had the chance to sit in the non-carbon bucket seats, which we'll get into later on this video. So one of the third things you should look into is at the time when you're building the car, for me, I was building the car in December, 2021, the price was about $3,800 for the option. If you were to buy these same seats from BMW, they would cost you excess of almost $20,000. I don't know the exact amount, but I've been hearing about $20,000. That's a lot of money for these seats. Um, to give you an idea, if you were to buy this car and you optioned the carbon bucket seats and you didn't like them, somebody's gonna buy them off you and you'll be able to make out on it. And sure, it can be a headache to swap the, the seats out, but end of the day, you might be a little more opted to get it because again, if you didn't get it and it was, it was a mistake on your part, you're gonna hate the car because you're gonna wish you had the car with the carbon bucket seats or you're gonna opt to pay that hefty price tag, which I'm sure a lot of you guys don't wanna pay. And going into it is that this is OEM, right? OEM, you're not gonna have any fitment issues. These are gonna fit seamless. You're not gonna have your creaks. You're not gonna have your check engine lights where your seatbelt's malfunctioning. These are OEM. So these are very um, high quality. You're not gonna have any problems with it. And if you watch my other video where I show you how to get in and out of the carbon bucket seats, I have about almost 4,000 miles on this car and these seats still look brand new, especially the driver's seat because I've been practicing the right way of getting in and out. And if you guys haven't done it already or check that video out, definitely check that video out because it's gonna help you 
uh, prolong the wear and tear on these seats. And in a future video, we're definitely gonna look into how to maintain these seats uh, with the proper uh, techniques, proper products, and we'll get into that in a future video. And then when you compare this car to any other brands in this class, when you look at these seats, no one else really stands out there. You know, obviously I talked about the Porsche, Porsche is on a different level. When you look at Mercedes and stuff, okay, there's some, some of their sports seats are decent, Audis, okay, but these carbon bucket seats blow them out of the water. And then when you show up to a car, I me, mean, like I said, you show these other brands what you have as OEM, they're just gonna like lose it. They're gonna be like, wow, that's incredible. And I've heard it before. Um, it's really hard to beat these seats out there on uh, the market. Speaking about being OEM, one of the coolest options too, when you have carbon bucket seats and these sports seats is that they're heated. I have heated seats. Obviously I live in South Florida, which you could probably see I'm kind of sweating now. I don't really need the heated seats, but there are those few days where, you know, it'd be ideal. Um, and if you have a significant other that gets always get cold in the car, that when you have the AC blaring, then the carbon bucket seats with heated seats might be a solution, especially my wife. My wife loves to put up the heated seats on, especially when I have this nice and cool. So those are the pros that I would say about having these carbon bucket seats. And I gotta say, I personally, in my personal opinion, I would not be able to order this car without the carbon bucket seats. It's one of the main options that I wanted on this car. And if there was a carbon uh, shortage and there wasn't able to produce these seats, I probably wouldn't have accepted the car. So those are the pros about having the carbon bucket seats. Now let's get into the cons. So one of the things you should look at into the cons is that the price, all right? So let's just say that you're building the car, you're up to your limit and $3,800 is a lot of money. It's not cheap by any means, but if you were to look at it with what you would pay if you missed out on the option, it's about $20,000 $20, plus. So when you look at it both ways, it could be pros and cons. And that's why I put it in the cons because $3,800 is not cheap by all means. It's a lot of money, but also too, if you were to buy it, you're paying, uh, you're paying more than $20,000. One of the things that I noticed is that you lose the ability to relax. And the reason why I say you lose the ability to relax is that on a regular comfort seat, you're allowed to open your legs, spread your feet, allow your boys to breathe a little bit. But when you're sitting in the carbon bucket seats, your legs are kind of kept cramped. You know, you have to be in that position um, in order to obviously not wear out the bolsters, uh, to not wear out the seat. Um, so that's one thing you should look into. If this is a daily driver and you don't mind, you know, with the tighter on the, on the leg area, keeping your legs kind of like um, parallel instead of like being able to relax a little bit. If you're driving on a lot of highway, that could be a little bit annoying. But when you're shifting gears on a manual car, you're gonna, kind of have to keep your, your, your legs kind of closer together to get to that uh, clutch. So here's another con. When I take long road trips or when I get in the car normally, I take everything out of my pocket. You know, when you take everything out of your pocket, you're not gonna be able to um, mess up your, your seats because sometimes when you have jacketed items, right, like a wallet, phone, um, even though it's inside your pants, it could leave a, a mark on your seat because the corners of it go out and kind of like have abrasion on the seat. And that's what's gonna piss you off at the end of the day. So I like to take things out of my pocket and put in the cup holders. The only thing is you have to remember is that don't forget your wallet and some of your essentials. Um, so that's one thing I've been doing to keep my pockets clear, especially when you go on long road trips because you, you don't want anything uh, you know, feeling it because when you're sitting in these seats, uh, you could kind of feel the tightness of it right in your pants and you're squishing whatever's in your pocket a little bit more closer to your, uh, to your thighs. This next con, will probably relate to a lot of people that have significant others. Your significant other may not like the, the process of getting into the car, getting out of the car. It may be too difficult or tedious for them. So that's another con. If you're single and you don't care, then that's, this doesn't relate to you then. Um, but if you're taking out you know, other people out on dates and stuff, and those people don't like to get in the car like that, that's gonna be an issue. Um, probably not. <laughs> this is gonna look so amazing, it's gonna impress them. So, you know, it is what it is. So another con is, Okay, if you were to compare these seats on comfortability compared to the base seats, the base seats were knocking out of the park with how comfortable they are. Um, the longest time I've been in this car is probably about three and a half hours, maybe closer to four hours. Um, I've driven probably about eight hours in total in a day, you know, going up to alligator window tents and coming back. 
And that was about closer to seven and a half, eight hours. And that was the most I've driven in a car in one day. And those, these seats weren't bad. I took the proper precautions. I had a nice space seating. Uh, the climate was nice and comfortable, not like how it is in the garage. You could probably see I'm sweating. I took everything in my pocket, so it wasn't that bad. But again, if I were to imagine five, six hours, this might get really uncomfortable. But again, who's really taking those long road trips like that? Not really often, maybe once in a while, maybe once in a blue moon. So definitely take that into account. So one of the things that you're gonna look into also if you're taking these long road trips is that there's no lumbar support. So if you're looking for that support where it kind of molds to your back, so you're not having that lower back pain, these seats don't have it. The only thing you do have is people in the back that can kind of tickle you, which you've heard that joke before already, um, but that's an option that you're not gonna have. So if you're looking for long road trips and that's gonna bother you, um, then you're gonna have to suck it up or grab like a little small sponge or pillow and to sit on it and to kind of mold it the way you need it. Um, me personally, I haven't had the need to, to do that option. And again, I haven't really taken five, six hours in total long trips, um, but altogether in one day, yeah, it's been about seven hours. So one of the options I wish these carbon bucket seats had was ventilated seats. I know we talked about heated seats on the pros. I wish these had ventilated seats. If you look at the base seats, you have an option of adding the ventilated seats. And living in South Florida, that would have been something that's really ideal, especially in the summer months when it's really hot. Um, so that would have been something that's good to keep your, you know, keep your body cool. And then I'm gonna give you guys my final thoughts. We're gonna go outside the car, talk about the final thoughts. I'm gonna get out of this car before I keep sweating into this car. So I'll give you my final thoughts. And also too, there's a very unique way to get in and out of these seats. And I mentioned it in my other video, which I mentioned in the last um, portion of this uh, video. This is how I get out. And that's something that you're gonna have to use to if you do care about preserving these seats. All right, so I have to take this last portion of the video inside the house because it's way too hot in the garage and I do need to get a mini split later on. I'm hoping next year I will be saving up for that and we're gonna get that installed so it could be no sweaty vlogs inside the garage. Um, but again, let's do the final thoughts. My final thoughts about these carbon bucket seats is that for me, I personally wouldn't be able to accept that car without the carbon bucket seats. I think over time, this being the last manual M3 or possibly one of the last manual M3s, I think we heard some hints from BMW itself when they did a promo video for the G87 M2. Um, they kind of led some hints there. Um, and this is gonna be the last non-hybrid M3. And having these carbon bucket seats make it all so much more special. The drivability, um, the, how it amplifies the driving experience for me, I had to get the carbon bucket seats. And the funny thing is though, when I placed my order, I've never even sat in the carbon bucket seats. I didn't know how it was gonna fit my body shape. And that's one thing you need to take account. Your body shape is gonna be a big thing on how you like these seats, how they mold to your body. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat things if, if it may get uncomfortable, depending on how your body shape is. Um, give you guys an idea, I'm about 5'11". Um, on a, any, good, any good day, depends on how much uh, junk food I eat, I'm about 205, 206. Um, and I would say I'm considered stocky. Um, so for me, it fits me fine. I don't have any issues on my shoulders. I don't have any issues on my waist or anything like that. It feels really good to me. Um, again, I mentioned in the, in the video, uh, long road trips hasn't really affected me. Sure, you have your typical soreness on the back, right, when you do these long road trips, but it doesn't deter me from sitting in these seats. These seats are absolutely amazing. And I guess you could say I'm kind of biased towards getting these seats, but there's people out there that I've talked to that have new builds. You know, they're, they're saying that I'm gonna get it without them because this is gonna be my daily driver. And this is something that I can't see myself long-term jumping in and out of these seats like that. And again, it's not for everybody, but if, it's, if these pros and cons relate to you in a certain way where like, hey, I can relate to that, and that's more of a pro for me that I need, then maybe opt for it. Um, there was a time where I was about to get this car and there was a lot of chatter on the forums where people were saying that, you know, you know, due to supply chain issues, the carbon was gonna be an issue. And at that point, if you look at these threads way back ago, probably about a year ago, I was freaking out. I told my sales advisor, Marcus Cooper, that I don't wanna take this car without the carbon bucket seats. You know, for me, it needed to be there. 
So end of the day, you need to decide if these seats need to be in your build. But if you guys have any questions about anything I went over today, if you could chime in too, again, people in these People in this community that you know, I'm, I'm glad to be part of, we help each other out. So if you have a G8X, M3, M4, and you have experience of having uh, the carbon bucket seats or you wish you had them, let me know in the comments because other people do read the comments and that allows them to really think, hey, I'm being more persuaded not to get them or I'm being persuaded more to get them. Um, but if anybody asks me, I'm always gonna say, it's absolutely worth it but is it worth it for you? So other than that, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys on the next video.